With the GoCurrency.com sports ticker, I'm Jessica Cudi. Another fantastic update on the status of Bill's safety, Damar Hamlin, after being resuscitated and hospitalized following the Monday night football game against the Bengals. The breathing tube was removed overnight, and he is talking with doctors and nurses and his family and even his teammates, FaceTiming with the Bills today. Doctors said yesterday that removing the breathing tube would be a big step, an important step for Hamlin, for they are hoping to be able to return home with his family as soon as possible. There's also been an update on the NFL playoffs, given the decision yesterday to not play the Bills-Bengals game that was postponed on Monday. The NFL owners have approved a plan that leaves open the possibility of a neutral neutral site AFC championship game and could determine home field advantage for a wild card game between the Bengals and the Ravens via coin flip. Some scenarios could play out this weekend. There's a lot of potentials. We will see how it all unfolds this final weekend of regular season in the NFL. Busy weekend for Husker sports. This weekend, Nebraska wrestling is back in action facing Gardner Webb and Campbell on Saturday. Tomorrow in North Carolina, eight Huskers enter the weekend ranked, including Peyton Robb, who is now the number one one ranked wrestler in the nation at 157 pounds. Women's hoops is at Rutgers with a one o'clock tip. Men's basketball also on the road at Minnesota. Early start for those Huskers, 11 a.m. for that one. And women's gymnastics open up their season with a home meet against number 15 Arkansas inside the Devaney Center with the meet starting at 3 p.m. Coming up in hour number two, we will hear from head coach Heather Brink giving us a preview of the team and the season. Our sports nightly updates tonight are presented by Currency. Currency makes financing quick, easy, and secure for heavy machinery, ag equipment, trucks, trailers, and more. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. Now get ready for Sports Nightly coming up. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. I believe that, like, I want to... I want to help guys get better. And so to do that, you have to have players who want that, who want to wake up every day and just work and grind. And so um, that's all really important to me. Uh, if we have the core of our team that's like that, we'll be hard to beat. Side for Walker, get past left side. Bryden Bach to Wiltshire, puts it up, got it! Three ball, C.J. Wiltshire, another CVA three. That ball was just popping around, just great movement. Shelly to throw it in, baseline left, into Markowski, back to Jazz, three, pointer shoot, betcha! In the deep left corner, off the screen assist from Markowski. Walker in the back corner will bring it across the line with a pass to Gary. Gary attacks the rim. Jam over with a right hand. A tomahawk dunk by Gary. And the Huskers with a 41-24 lead. And there is our first Interstate Bank play of the game. Ford series for Nebraska. Hybe around a Mendelssohn screen. Deep right side Izzy. Ford's three. You betcha! That's a Central Valley egg three from Izzy Bourne off the assist from Hybe. Stand up, Husker fans. This is a great win for Nebraska. They knock off previously undefeated Kansas. Their second win over a top 20 team this year. And the Huskers in three overtimes defeat Kansas 85 to 79 tonight in Lincoln. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Well, happy Friday, everybody. We're glad you're joining us here on Sports Nightly on this Friday evening. we got a full two-hour show coming up for you tonight. I'm Jessica Cootie. Once again, flying solo, Greg Sharp out for tonight. But, uh, hey, we got a lot to get to here in these next couple of hours. Just mentioned it, Heather Brink, head coach for women's gymnastics, will be in as those Huskers open up their season this weekend. We've got another Title IX series interview coming up for you with Megan Straub here in hour number two. We're going to talk some Husker bowling, one of the powerhouses here here in Lincoln. And we're also going to have Damon Benning coming up here in just a little bit. So get excited for that. We got a fun two hours ahead, but we got to get to here in this first segment. There was a press conference held today as media was able, media members were able to meet the new coordinators, offensive coordinator Marcus Satter, Satterfield and defensive coordinator Tony White for the first time holding their first press conferences. So we have a few of the highlights from those press conferences. So let's get right to a few of those. And we start with the OC, Marcus Satterfield. He was first at the podium today. And, you know, he started off, well, this first clip here that we're going to uh, play for first talking about his background with coach rule and why he wanted to join his staff here in nebraska well, we're, we go all the way back to 2005 at western carolina and uh you know i was with him i was his first coordinator at temple in 2013 and we've been together really ever since even though i've been at different jobs you know we're still you know really really close i think the one thing is just 
the like mindset that we have. You know, we, we expect football to be played a certain way. We expect coaches to coach a certain way. I think we're, we're truly aligned uh, from that standpoint. And so when he uh, gave me the opportunity, I remember driving home from after we beat Clemson, and uh, he texted me, said, call me. You know, and I'm just hoping that that's what he's going to you know, say is come with me. And when he did, I didn't even let him get it out of his mouth. I was like, heck yeah, let's go. That that's so awesome. I, I love that. And also, too, that's kind of been a, an ongoing theme between a lot of these assistant coaches that Matt Rule have brought on. It's certainly not easy to turn things around and get a recruiting class together and then implement all of your systems and then, hey, turn right back around and get ready to go with, to spring ball. And so the fact that a lot of these coaches are familiar with each other, they're all on the same page, have the same mindset, has enabled them to kind of move together a little bit quicker than, than maybe other staffs that you're putting together. But yeah, just a, a lot of the same like mindsets on this staff that that coach rule has brought together, including the offensive coordinator, coordinator, Marcus Satter, Satterfield. And he also talked about what's at the top of his first to do list. Uh, just recruit, uh, get to know our players. You know, in today's world, you got to know you got to recruit your players, especially when you're a new staff with the transfer portal and all the things that are going on in college football. So just, you know, recruit our players, make sure you get here fast enough before they go home for Christmas and and get to see those guys and then just start recruiting and start, you know, evaluating the roster and seeing what we need and trying to go fill those needs. He has done a little bit of evaluating and looking into what he needs. And he was asked about what would be the biggest need position wise for the offense. I think, uh, you know, I think receiver is a spot that, that we need to build. You know, we've got some good receivers. I just think that we need to build the depth there and the, uh, you know, different types of receivers. You know, you don't want them all to look the same and be the same. You need different, you know, different types of body types and stuff. So I think just, you know, filling some needs there. And I think we did a really nice job of that. Uh, you know, really fired up about the class we have coming in uh, from the first signing day. And I think that we can continue to do that this month. Marcus Washington, one of those guys that will be back. And then Elante Brown posted on his social media that he'll be back. Trey Palmer is headed to the NFL. There are a couple of pieces, but certainly you like to have a lot of different kinds of receivers, as you just heard him say. And so it'll be uh, interesting to see what kind of receivers they bring into that room. He went into detail about his offense and the pro-style offense, and they're going to use the tight end. And listen up. They're going to use the fullback. And uh, so that and then that got a response. And he actually even mentioned one of the places that he coached for a game that involved a fullback and said to look it up on YouTube. So I'm not sure what that game is. I can look it up and, and find it on YouTube and, and bring it to you here a little bit later. But yeah, that was part of him going into the pro style offense and the kind of offense that he wants to run. He he brought to know that he was going to huddle, that they're going to huddle up when they go onto the field. So he explained why he likes for that to happen, why he likes to utilize the huddle on the field. You don't really want to go down this path, I don't think, but uh, I'm on a crusade about the huddle. Like the huddle is is the the heart and soul of football. Uh, you cannot tr You cannot teach the leadership moments you can't script the leadership moments that happen in a huddle if you talk to uh any football player that played in a huddle they're always going to talk about funny things that happen in a huddle. this guy was puking in the huddle. this guy ripped my you know what in the huddle this guy you know joe montana goes in the huddle and says hey, we're getting ready to go down you know 75 yards and win this game so there's all these moments that happen in a huddle and then i think how do you ask your quarterback to be a leader if he never talks today's football has become you know, clapping my hands for a snap count and the coach is signaling plays on cue cards. And so and then they complain about the quarterback not being a vocal leader. Well, when does he have a chance to lead? And I think in a huddle and the way that we play football, it gives our quarterbacks you know, a chance to be a vocal point, a vocal leader on our offense. So there you have it. He also went into detail about they're going to run the football and it is absolutely necessary to do that in the Big Ten. I mean, I think it's perfect, to be honest with you, just from a standpoint of, like, we are a little bit old school. Like, we're going to run the football. Like, everything's going to be, you know, start with winning the line of scrimmage and running the ball. You know, all the different throws and play actions and stuff come off of running the football. So I think in order to win in this league, you got to be tough. you got to be blue-collar, and you got to run the football, and you got to win the line of scrimmage, and that's where our offense starts. I know Husker fans will love to hear those two things, the fullback and running the football. Uh, last thing from Coach Satterfield from today that I wanted to hit on is uh, it's been well noted that uh, the time, the tenure at Carolina for Matt Roll and, and the staff that he brought on there didn't work out. And so, you know, 
Coach Satterfield was one of those guys that was on the staff at Carolina in 2020. And so he was asked about how much that helped him grow and what he learned about himself throughout that process. I think any time that you can have, you know, you have to go through some things like that, it's going to toughen you up and callous you up, um, whether it's warranted or not. You know, just it's just part of the gig. You know, if you call plays, if you're the head coach or the offense coordinator, you're the quarterback, you're usually going to get uh, a lot of the blame or a lot of the credit, whether it's deserved or not. So I enjoyed my time there, loved it. It was a great, great experience, great opportunity. And I think it, it's only toughened, calloused me up to be, uh, you know, even more successful here. All right, after Coach Satterfield, Tony White, the defensive coordinator, took the podium and answered questions for media. And uh, first clip I want to play for you is uh, why it was a good decision for him to come here. You know, again, the, whenever you're talking about a situation where you're in a good place, I mean, I was in a good place with, with Syracuse and, and Coach Babers and those young men over there played their butts off for me um, in the university. And when an opportunity presents itself like this, I think it, it, it comes down to a lot of factors. You know, I, it, me and my family talking, um, the relationship with Coach Rule going back to when I was a player and he was, a, he was coming in to be a GA. And then, um, again, I said this once before, but, you know, I think it, first impressions are, are really big. And when I was in middle school and high school, that was kind of like the birth of, of me understanding what college football was and playing football. And that's the, you know, you look at me in middle school and, and I graduated in 90, 96, 97 from high school. That was Nebraska, right? That, that's Nebraska. You looked up and you saw Nebraska, Nebraska, Nebraska. So you add in all that stuff and then just sitting around talking about it with the family. And I thought it was something that you, you could not pass it up. So Coach White also talked about, you know, ha having Coach Rule involved in the defense, how open he is to that. And, and this is his answer to that. I mean, a football guy's a football guy, and and uh, I I thought it was really good being around some some coaches. They said be the be the dumbest one in the room. You know, you want to be in a room where you're the dumbest guy, because then that's all you're doing is growing. You know, and and so when you get to listen to these guys and and listen to them talk football, just football. I mean, I mean, I, w I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, he's in there. He's talking schemes. He's talking mostly, again, you see it from the, uh, the other side of the ball. You know what I mean? You see what the offense was thinking, what he would have done, how he would have attacked. And so then it, it, it helps you find answers. It helps you see, like, okay, well, if I move this guy here, you were thinking this one time, but now you're thinking this, and I can get you. So uh, I think it's really important that he's involved in. And like I said, he, he loves ball. You know, that's a, that's a good thing about Sat, these other guys, is when they're not doing anything naturally, you see them around ball, watching ball. You know what I mean? So that's, that's really cool. And, again, it'll make me better. So we've talked a lot about, since the staff has been assembled, about how Coach Rule is so familiar with a lot of these guys. They have some kind of ties, have worked together all on the same page. But Coach White had not worked with Terrence Knighton before, so he was asked about getting to know his new D-line coach. He, listen, I wouldn't want to do something wrong. I tell you that he he gets after it. He's he's fiery. But uh, again, you talk about knowledge. A guy who's played it at the highest the highest level you can on the planet. Um, really good communicator. He knows what he wants to do. You know, so uh, it's it's been fun being around him up to this point. And uh, you know, once we get the recruiting done and 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 get a chance to get off the road and all get in the room and and whoever the the, the last additions to the staff, once we can all be together and really talk football and get into it, then uh, I, I don't doubt that it'll be a, a good experience for everybody. It, it was such a whirlwind. Again, Coach Rule was bringing in one guy, and then they'd hit the ground running recruiting, and then they'd have official visits here in Lincoln, and then uh, all of the above. So a lot of these coaches, too, have also addressed they've, they've got to get to know the guys that are already here and recruit those guys and get those guys to stay and, and understand what kind of tools they already have here in place. And so he was asked about getting to know the current roster. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, they've been sprinkling in because when I when I got here, they were they were taking finals and you know in that discretionary week. So I got a chance to see a lot of the guys stepping in there, and then any chance we get, we go back and watch just to see you know body types, how they move, and all that kind of stuff, just on, on film. And um, you know, it's funny you you talk about 
coaching change and you go into a room and you think, okay, and you watch the film, you say, yeah, you know, these guys aren't, aren't very good, da 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 You know, well, well, when you watch the guys, they play their butts off, you know, and you do have some talent there. I think it was just a matter of, for, for me, making sure that everybody's on the same page and everybody knows what they're playing for because that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing that helped us at our last school, at my last school, was when we all saw things the same way, we all knew what we were fighting for, it made us, it made us more difficult to stop. And so you have talent here. You, uh, I mean, I, I like the guys up front. I mean, I like, I like Ty Robb. I remember him from when I was at Arizona State be, recruiting him. Uh, got, a, saw, got a chance to see Nash run around. Um, I mean, uh, again, Luke, you see, I like some of the athleticism of the DBs, you know, but again, it, it comes back to seeing them in, and feeling them in person and then getting a chance to put them in the best spots where they can just go play versus be thinking all the time. So those are some of the highlights from the press conference today from the offensive coordinator, Marcus Satter Satterfield, and defensive coordinator, Tony White. All right, got to take a break here on Sports Nightly. Still lots to come. Up next, we're going to hear from Damon Benning. So I roped him in to come help us out here on Sports Nightly as I am flying solo here these, this next couple of hours. And so I uh, appreciate him joining us. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to be a part of the show, 402-413-2400 on our Woodhouse auto family hotline which is brought to you by woodhouse where you can shop your way from one of these 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned you could always find what you're looking for with woodhouse all right keep it here on sports nightly damon benning up next nebraska innovation campus creates partnerships between business and the university of nebraska Partners lease office space, laboratories, pilot plants, and greenhouses, all centrally located with easy access to University of Nebraska talent and resources. Nebraska Innovation Campus, creating spaces and culture that inspire. Learn more at innovate.unl.edu. This year, we considered hiring an ad agency to help with our marketing. They pitched impressive visuals and a script that was inspiring and exotic animal mascots to help grab your attention. In the end, we just decided to tell it to you straight. Shelter Insurance has award-winning customer service at affordable rates. Plus, our local agents are there to help you understand what coverage you need. See Shelter Agent Sharon Lear in Papillion, Paul Hoos in Grand Island, or an Ord C Agent Matt Woodward. Experience the difference at Woodhouse Buick GMC. From the GMC Acadia to the Buick Encore, we're sure to have a vehicle that fits your lifestyle. Our climate-controlled showroom guarantees a comfortable shopping experience every time you visit. Plus, our commitment to our customers continues well beyond the date of purchase. You will leave our lot feeling comfortable and confident in your new vehicle. Start your car buying journey today, in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash Huskers. Husker fans, get your tickets now for Nebraska's next home game at Pinnacle Bank Arena. The Huskers take on Penn State next Wednesday with tip-off between the Big Red and Nittany Lions set for 7 p.m. The Huskers will celebrate Australia night in honor of Izzy Bourne and Jazz Shelley. Get your tickets at huskers.com slash tickets or call the Nebraska Athletic Ticket Office at 1-800-8-BIG-RED. That's 1-800-8-BIG-RED. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. 
Bank of the West is offering the first checking account designed for climate action. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you. Shows you the estimated carbon impact of debit card purchases. And there's no minimum balance required. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Every single day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed the globe. When you raise food corn for CVA, you can earn an additional $25,000 per quarter section. That's $100,000 more profit for every four quarters you farm. Do the same work, raise more profit. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how you can get up to a $5,000 signing bonus with a value-added grain contract at cvacoop.com. Central Valley A, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With the proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Here's Greasel, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app, Go Big Red. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to Sports Sightly, I'm Jessica Cootie, flying solo, so I am raining in everybody to help me out here these uh, last couple of nights. And, of course, you know I had to give a call into Damon Binning, who's joining us. Damon, how you doing? You survive holidays, Happy New Year, all of that. I'm good. Happy New Year to you, too. You, you put out the bad signal. It's, it must be rough having friends like you can just nobody wants to tell JC. No, it's like, hey, listen, I got a job to do. I need some help. You got me. And it's like I feel like I have to say yes, but it's you. So I appreciate it. I'm calling uh, everybody on the team to, to contribute here uh, this week. <laughs> I feel like it's good to know that it's not the content that I bring. It's just because you can. No, I mean, listen. You asked me what we're going to talk about. I don't even know what we're going to talk about. We're just gonna we're just gonna chit chat, right? How about I so I put out a video after signing day, talking about the oatmeal raisin, and I did not know people were going to get so angry oh. one way or the other about oatmeal raisin cookies and Starburst. People were angry that you guys didn't like Starburst. Uh, you know, so. It's rare, like on social media, that I'm like, wait, I think it's just because people like her more. But <laughs> every, I couldn't believe how everybody was like coming to your defense. I'm like, are they doing this just because she's nice or do, are they really wanting the effort and the low risk reward of opening up a Starburst after 60 seconds of fighting with the rapper for like five <laughs> seconds of flavor? You can get them unwrapped now. Come on. Really? Yeah. Are they still soft? Yeah. But you, How does you, that you can work? get them in the bag it's unwrapped. Really? Come on, get with the times, Damon. You're not that well, old. Unless, as you know, unless it's a gummy bear, I'm not buying it. <laughs> or or a cough drops. That's your oh, candy. Oh, yeah, that's right, my candy, right? They what? were sugar free. So you know the funny thing about that, I and I didn't want to tell you you were kind of right, but when when I open them up, they're like misshapen they're teeny i'm like did i get the knockoff <laughs> bottom portion of the the production bin but they did not seem like regular cough drops they were about the size of my pinky nail and 
I was like, wow, maybe she's right. <laughs> I, I'm always right. The more, you, the quicker you figure that out, the better it goes. <laughs> well, we had two new additions this week to the signing class. And when you, you came on on signing day, we knew that there were going to be some additions that we couldn't talk about because we had to wait for it to be official. But now that it's almost all put together, expecting maybe a couple more from the portal, maybe a couple more on, on signing day in February. But overall, what were your thoughts on the, on the class that this coaching staff brought in? Oh, that's impressive. Uh, and uh, listen, I, I don't care if you're affiliated with the network or not. If you're just a neutral, innocent bystander and you're looking at going from low 60s to top, the consensus top 25 in terms of how you've you, you put together this class, and I think they're currently at 23 commits, um, it's been an impressive haul. And, and you know, because you're around those guys, you, you get to talk to them. They work their tail off. I think they know exactly what they want. It was kind of topped off this past weekend with with Nation and and Cam Lenhart and and just kind of telling a similar story, right, JC? It was they have a plan. The staff talked to me about a plan. It felt like family. I, I really like what they laid out for me. And, you know, they just see I believed in what they were telling me. And I, I, it's just kind of the reoccurring theme so far with – with what we've heard with these recruits is is Nebraska's staff has been very specific in terms of what it is that they see, what they want, and how these recruits fit into the profile. So it's been it's been impressive to watch unfold. You know, we talked about this a lot, and this was a big theme when I sat down with the coaches about how, you know, so many former players want to come back and coach for them. And, and Jeremiah talked about that. Hey, when you're sitting in a living room with somebody, and it, it gives you instant credibility because if you didn't, if he sold you something that he didn't deliver on, you're not going to go back and coach with them. And so you were a player, and then now you got a son that's going through this. It's got to also be a, a different, I guess, kind of perspective that these coaches are coming in having, I played for the guy. I know what he's about. Yeah, I think that's that's and that's a lot of it, right? The, just the real life, realistic comps that Coach Rule and his staff can use. They're not just some abstract, you know, comparisons. It's like, hey, when I did this or when I went through this with Coach Rule, so it just it brings a certain level of of, of personal feel, personal flair, authenticity, uh, if you will, in in the recruiting world and. Listen, as you know, it's all about relationship building. And yeah, it's not so much always about getting new guys as much as it is recruiting your own guys mm -hmm. and, and who else is recruiting your own guys. And I just think the more authentic and family you can be, uh, the easier it'll be for everybody involved. I asked you this on the press conference day, and, and we assume that this is what he was going to do, is, is really target this area and, and try to win this area. And then since then, that's absolutely been a message. And every coach that I sat down with for those signing day interviews, unsolicited, brought up that they want to win the state of Nebraska, that they're going to, they really want to bring the kids here and keep that local talent here. So your take on that, and, and especially, again, having a kid, but then coaching kids and, and being so familiar with this state, how important is that? Yeah, I grabbed a couple of the guys that I coach, and they're after another one that I parent. And <laughs> I think they got they got eight total when you count the preferred walk-ons with the scholarship guys. And that's it's a really good job. You know, the the, the story behind the story, he was relentless. Uh, by he, I mean Coach Rule, and, and going after guys that weren't originally in the fray and that he tried to get into the fold, guys that were in the fold, then out of the fold that he went and got back. Uh, you know, like a Malachi Coleman uh, locally. Uh, he made a good, valiant run at Zane Flores, who was never really in the fold, but that didn't sit well with him. And so I just think his relentless pursuit of kind of locking up the borders meant a lot. Because, I mean, let's be honest, Jess, you, you know this just because you had such a good relationship with him. You know, Coach Joseph did a really good job kind of mending the gap between what the Metro kids, the Nebraska kids thought and Nebraska staff currently. And he worked really hard to, to start to reestablish that tree of trust with the university. And, and Coach Rule was able to double down on getting the attention of those guys, right? I mean, he had gotten in contact with Jalen Lloyd. They told him that Coach Joseph had said, hey, you know what, you guys were kind of misevaluated early on. He had he'd went out to come see Tristan Alvano 
things like that that weren't getting kind of the attention that they felt like they deserved. And Coach Rule and his staff were able to make good. I mean, what he did, winning the state over for the most part and with, with the young people, I think is impressive because you know you've got a good enough feel for it now. So many people talk to you. There's this Nebraska nice thing. There's this level of trust. And it's hard sometimes for guys on the outside that are looking in. But Coach Rule and his staff seem to have hit the ground running. And I think it starts with just being authentic. And you said, too, I mean, you said it that there's there was a lot of talent in this past class. But there's some really good talent up and coming, which we can't name names specifically uh, here on this <laughs> show. So don't do that. But, I mean, there's some good talent coming through the state of Nebraska here in the next couple of years. Absolutely. The 24 and 25 class are loaded. Um, and a lot of those guys have multiple, you know, four, five, six, seven or more power five offers the next couple of years. And so I think, you know, winning is obviously going to help and, and getting off to a good start could never hurt. But the ability to build these relationships early, we talked about the junior day that he had and how quickly he put that together. He'd been here eight, nine days and that came together, which was unbelievable. Uh, by the way, but you're right. Uh, there's plenty to be had, and I think this staff is just getting started. All right. Uh, thoughts on the national championship and Michigan not being in it? It's 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 strange, right? It, and it's funny because you know you and I will 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 talk college football and out, outside of just Nebraska and the landscape of what's going on. And I think both you and I, if I remember right, we liked Michigan and we liked Michigan quite a bit uh, in terms of their place in the Big Ten, and this was before Ohio State. And so to see what TCU was able to do in that game and how they were able to play just well enough, right? They didn't get great quarterback play, but they got timely good quarterback play. Right. They got timely stops. And, you know, Michigan was a little out of character. And in games like that where it's winner take all, you don't get mulligans. And TCU made Michigan pay for not getting mulligans. And I'm excited because I think they're explosive enough. TCU is explosive enough on offense um, to really present some challenges. And they're unique enough defensively to present some challenges. Georgia, on the other hand, uh, that Ohio State team gave them all they wanted, right? And then some Stroud doing things that he hadn't done his career in Columbus, scrambling, you know, evading good pass rushers, uh, buying time, using his legs, things that, we weren't sure C.J. Stroud was comfortable doing. And, again, it came down to Ruggles and the struggles <laughs> making that last kick for a quality kicker. I'm excited for this one. I thought all year Georgia was the best team in football. But in this sport, and we've, we see it a lot in the pros, where sometimes it's about getting hot. We've seen wild card teams win Super Bowls. Uh, I think of the Steelers with my man Andrew um, <laughs> making, their, making their run as a six. Right. Um, and TCU just may be that team that's playing just well enough at the right time to present some challenges. I, I'm I'm pretty pumped for this one. I picked Ohio State over Georgia. I actually am not as high on the Georgia train as everybody else. But and I also think Max Duggan is a better quarterback than Stetson Bennett. And a lot of times a better quarterback wins these games. So I don't know. It could be it could be Ooh. fascinating. Hot take from J.C. You know what I like, though, where I got. I, I can't agree with you three times in one interview. So I kind of agree with you that Duggan and Bennett, while Duggan is part have of the system, had, one things they both one thing they both do. How about when they they play well when their team needs them to play well? True. Right. I mean, those guys are clutch, and they play good football in tough moments. So that's one thing that I want to see. Like, who plays the best, the longest, or the most? You know, uh, the biggest amounts of times I think will give their team the best chance to win. Oh, look that! Look at that! We're out of time. I told you we'd only talk ten minutes, so it doesn't give you or and Andrew any time to talk about the Steelers. I'm so sorry. About that. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't be a great interview if you weren't you. <laughs> All right, David Benny, appreciate your time. We'll let you get out of here. Thanks for helping hey. me out. For helping out hey. a teammate over here. Anytime. And it's it's only because of Andrew, but thanks for you guys. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. That is thanks. David Binning. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. More from Sports Nightly coming up right after this. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson. 
But when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Here's Greasehold, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grease begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app, Go Big Red. Your story, it lives in the capital city, where we take Nebraska nice to another level, and we always show up for Go Big Red. In your story, a pioneering spirit has built a community that cares. Your story is the story of Lincoln, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's breaking news from the capital or sending you to the best shows in town, and here in the Lincoln Journal Star is where it comes to life. Lincoln Journal Star, where your story lives. Nebraska women's basketball offers one of the best values in all of Husker sports with single game reserve tickets at Pinnacle Bank Arena for just $15. Adult general admission seating is just $10, while youth and senior general admission tickets are $5. Children six and under are just a buck. Plans now to bring your whole family to Husker women's basketball for Big Ten home games in January and February. Get your tickets and the full schedule at Huskers.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS. SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota. The brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? (laughs) Think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. 
based on manufacturer estimates. See why 2000 through 2021 sales. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Welcome back into Sports Nightly, hour number one. I'm Jessica Cootie. The Sports Nightly hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of these 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. Anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. That number to call or text in if you want to be a part of the show is 402-413-2400 if you want to let us know how Wrong Damon's opinion is about Starburst or oatmeal raisin cookies. That is the number, 402-413-2400. I did realize probably we, we had an inside story there about the candy and the cough drops when he said it. I realized probably not everybody understood that. So it was his second game once he was uh, signed on to be the color analyst of the broadcast. And he's sitting up there in the booth and he said, here, do you want some candy? And it was that, that awful tasting cough drop, menthol tasting drops that you, you literally eat when you are or suck on when you have a sore throat and I he's like here you want some candy that is not candy dude that is not candy that why would you want to eat that for pleasure so anyways we I've given him a hard time about that ever since and then the oatmeal raisin cookie is a discussion that we have a lot of times in commercial breaks even with Andrew back there it's always Greg and Damon versus me and Andrew they like oatmeal raisin cookies for some reason and so yeah that's always kind of an inside joke that we have with the HRN team and Andrew you're on my side on this one, right? Starbursts are good. Oatmeal raisins are bad. I am with you. I cannot do oatmeal raisins. I, I'm a big chocolate chip guy. I even like white macadamia nut. That's a great cookie. I'm a big fan of that. So those are big things. But you know me, Jess. I'm not a huge fruit guy. You know that. So yeah. I'm like, my favorite flavors, it might startle some people, my favorite flavors are yellow and orange, which can people think are the worst flavors, but I, they're the best. I like yellow, but I do not like orange. Goodness. And yeah, so whenever we have cookies or an assortment of cookies that are brought into the studio for any given reason, any given reason the Omo Raisin cookies are always going to Greg because he's the only one that likes them up here. And uh, yeah, so also we had that recently. I don't think we've talked about it on the show. Uh, Rhonda Ravel and her staff, they bring around those warm cookies. What are they called? Warm, Warm Cookie, cookie company. company every Christmas uh, to thank everybody in the athletics department. And so they brought us some of those before Christmas and one of the oatmeal raisin cookies went to Greg. So that's a little backstory there. If you were wondering why we were talking about cough drops and Starburst and oatmeal raisin cookies. I did do a little research during the break from Marcus Satterfield when he was talking about, hey, go look up that play in the game against um Oh, it was, who was it? Who was the team? It was uh, Eastern Chattanooga and against Nebraska, the season opener back in 2011. So he said, go back, watch the first play, offensive play of the season. That was the very first call that he made that season. And um, they run out onto the field, the offense, defense, uh, the Nebraska offense had the ball first. So it was the uh, uh, Tennessee Chattanooga uh, offense had the ball second. And so they run out onto the field, they huddle up, and then after they break the huddle, they line up, there is two guys in the backfield, a running back and a fullback, and the quarterback hands the ball off to the fullback for the very first play of the season. So I think that's what he was getting at. His point that he was making to everybody is that, hey, if you're wondering if I like the fullback and if I believe in the fullback, just go check out that play, the very first play of the season, the one, the first one that he called of the season for Tennessee Chattanooga back in 2011, right here inside Memorial Stadium. So yeah, uh, going to use the fullback, and he talked about that today in his press conference. All right, going to work in another break here on Sports Nightly, but still more to come, so keep it right here. And check out the Husker Extra mobile app from the team at Lincoln Journal Star. It's the best place from everything Husker sports. Search the app store for Husker Extra and download today. Your stories are all around you. And in the Lincoln Journal Star is where they come to life. Go to lincolnjournalstar.com slash story. Subscri subscribe today and read on any digital device. All right, keep it here. Back with our final segment of hour number one next here on Sports Nightly.
With seven Nebraska women's basketball Big Ten home games left on the schedule in January and February, Husker fans can still take advantage of the starting five-pack. Build your own custom-made five-game women's basketball mini ticket package for just $60. Get your tickets now at huskers.com slash tickets or call the Nebraska Athletic Ticket Office at 1-800-8-BIG-RED. That's 1-800-8-BIG-RED. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Here's Greasel, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grease begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app, Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With the proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field final segment here of hour number one of sports nightly full another hour coming up for you next hour gonna have some fun with that one but wanted to close out the show talking a little college hoops because it's andrew and me on the show and so we are always going to talk hoops when we can so you dipped out of the iowa indiana game last night so after they were down about 20 i i just wasn't tuned in anymore i you know i love seeing iowa lose and I, I think I just had a point where I was like, ah, I'm good. They're, 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 gonna, they're not going to come back from it. And you told me today, did you see the game? Yeah, I so said, I watched I said, the end of it once I, said, I saw things unfolding. So. Oh, but I said, what game? What game? And you said, oh, it turned out to be a great game. So Yeah, so Indiana blew a 21-point lead, had another injury. But it was wild. There was some drama where um, – Iowa's head coach came over to the, the Indiana side and they were supposed to be a technical and then there wasn't a technical and they had to separate the teams. And so then the Indiana coach, uh, Mike Woodson, came on uh, or in his press conference said that was BS. He said, actually said the word. So, yeah, it was a high drama last night uh, there in, at Iowa. So that was pretty wild. Nebraska has Minnesota at Minnesota tomorrow, and we always talk about how you protect home court, steal a few on the road, and, and that's certainly, uh, the, hopefully, this, this is one of those games that Nebraska should be able to win on the road tomorrow. Oh, I'm 100% with you. I said this is something that 
Um, it's going to be a big test for the boys, and I think they're ready. For instance, their game in a hostile environment against Creighton, that probably should have been the most nerve-wracking they've ever been. They came in there, and they competed. And they put on for the Red State, and that was something good. And I think they're going to go travel to Minnesota and play another hard game. Should be a, hopefully a good bounce back opportunity and, and get a win. And then they got Illinois at home. Speaking of Illinois, that's one of the games you've got your eye on tomorrow. I'm pretty tuned in tomorrow. It's going to be a big one at 1230 of Wisconsin number 14 against Illinois. And big news breaking from the Big Ten and Illinois. Sky Clark, who was a huge talked about recruit. He was committed to Kentucky. He decommitted from Kentucky. He decided to go to Illinois. And now he randomly just decided to leave. So he has left the program, and no wow. one really has any ideas on what's going on. Um, so that's just kind of a big trending controversy de uh, deal that's going on right now. So still, I'll be tuned in for that game. Still early, obviously, in conference play, but Wisconsin, Michigan up at the top at 3 0. Has there been any surprises? Uh, for you so far this season? Something that's been surprising for me has been Purdue's starts and finishes these past weeks. Like the Rutgers game, they, they scurried out. The game against us of them coming to our place and playing in overtime, they scurried out of that. And then they played, um, recently they just had another game, I'm drawing a blank, but they had another toe-to-toe -to -toe matchup. And this isn't really, this is pretty much showing to me that all Purdue has is Zach Eady, and if you can double team him and get him out of the, the paint quick, he'll, he'll, he'll do turnovers, he'll throw the ball away, so I really don't see another guy besides maybe Morton on that Purdue team, so from what, how, how ready I was to see them being a Duke fan and, and them beating Duke by 20, I was like, this is the team to beat, and they're going to go to the Sweet 16, the Elite 8, so I'm not high on them as I was anymore, Jess, so that's a little difference from what I'm saying now. Well, again, it's going to be a gauntlet of a Big Ten, and uh, every game going to matter in this uh, when we come down to the standings. I was disappointed because earlier when we had David on, I was hoping you would jump in, not only just because you guys are both Steelers fans, but you guys both talk a lot of trash to each other about North Carolina and Duke, so that was unfortunate that we didn't get to hear that, that battle out between the two of you. No, I, I wanted to hear that too because we have not heard Damon's side of why he's a North Carolina fan I yet. mean, you guys are both on the bandwagon. No, 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 That's no, ridiculous. No, all my family on my dad's side's all Duke Blue Devils. I have a few cousins that went to Duke Law School, so I was, as a kid, I was always visiting the campus. I was always going in, up and seeing my fam, and then we go to Duke. It was amazing. So I have ties. I haven't heard anything mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Damon yet, so mm -hmm. he's been pretty quiet. All right, Art in Los Angeles says, how about melting a few yellow Starbursts on top of an uh, oatmeal raisin cookie? This way everyone is happy. No, that would be awful. That would be absolutely terrible. Andrew, I volunteer you to try that. No, I am good. Thank you, Art. I am good. <laughs> All right. We still have a whole, whole other hour coming up for you here on Sports Nightly on this Friday night edition. We get, we're going to shine some light on the ladies coming up at hour number two. Opening weekend for Nebraska Women's Gymnastics. Heather Brink is going to stop by. We're also going to continue our Title IX series with Megan Straub. So got a couple of awesome interviews lined up for you here in hour number two. So keep it right here on Sports Nightly. And Dorothy Lynch, home style and light and lean dressing. Endless flavorabilities. All right, got more from Sports Nightly coming up right after this. us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Every single day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed the globe.
hope. When you raise food corn for CVA, you can earn an additional $25,000 per quarter section. That's $100,000 more profit for every four quarters you farm. Do the same work, raise more profit. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how you can get up to a $5,000 signing bonus with a value-added grain contract at cvacoop.com. Central Valley A, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Here's Greasel, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red! Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier.
With the GoCurrency.com sports ticker, I'm Jessica Cudi. Another fantastic update on the status of Bill Safety, DeMar Hamblin, after being resuscitated and hospitalized following the Monday night football game in the Bills versus the Bengals. The breathing tube was removed overnight. He is talking with doctors and nurses and his family and even his teammates. He FaceTimed with the Bills today. Doctors said yesterday that removing that breathing tube would be a big step and an important step for Hamlin, who they're hoping to be able to return home with his family as soon as possible. There has been an update on the NFL playoffs given the decision yesterday to not play the Bills Bengals game that was postponed Monday. The NFL owners have approved a plan that leaves open the possibility of a neutral site AFC championship game and could determine home field advantage for a wild card game between the Bengals and Ravens via coin flip. And again, there's lots of scenarios still to play out and a lot of different situations that could happen. I'm hearing there's some Kansas City fans that are not happy, and that's not good if they are griping about that but yeah they're going to figure a lot of that out after this weekend for sure busy weekend for husker sports this weekend nebraska wrestling back in action facing gardner webb and campbell on saturday in north carolina eight huskers enter the weekend ranked including peyton robb who's now the number one ranked wrestler in the nation at 157 pounds women's hoops is at rutgers with a one o'clock tip tomorrow Men's basketball also on the road at Minnesota. They got an early start tomorrow, 11 a.m. for that one. Fred Hoiberg emphasized the importance of not getting out to a slow start, but a fast start, unlike what they did at Michigan State. And women's gymnastics opened up their season with a home meet against number 15 Arkansas inside the Devaney Center with the meet starting at 3 p.m. Coming up here in just a few minutes, we're going to hear from head coach Heather Brink as she gives us a preview of the season and the team. And that's our Sports Nightly ticker brought to you by Kurt. Does your business need quick, easy, and secure financing for equipment, trucks, or trailers? All you need is currency. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. Now get ready for another hour of Sports Nightly coming up. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. I believe that, like, I want to... I want to help guys get better. And so to do that, you have to have players who want that, who want to wake up every day and just work and grind. And so um, that's all really important to me. Uh, if we have the core of our team that's like that, we'll be hard to beat. Side for Walker, skip past left side. Bryden Baca, Wiltshire puts it up. Got it! Three ball. C.J. Wiltshire, another CVA three. That ball was just popping around. Just great movement. Shelly to throw it in baseline left. Into Markowski. Back to Jazz. Three. Finder shoot. Betcha. In the deep left corner. Off the screen assist from Markowski. Walker in the back corner. will bring it across the line with a pass to Gary. Gary attacks the rim. Jam over with a right hand. A tomahawk dunk by Gary. And the Huskers with a 41-24 lead. And there is our first Interstate Bank play of the game. Fourth series for Nebraska. Hyvie around a Mendelssohn screen. Deep right side, Izzy Bourne's three. You betcha! That's a Central Valley egg three from Izzy Bourne. Off the assist from Hyvie. Stand up, Husker fans. This is a great win for Nebraska. They knock off previously undefeated Kansas. Their second win over a top 20 team this year. And the Huskers in three overtimes defeat Kansas 85 to 79 tonight in Lincoln. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Welcome back into hour number two of this Friday night edition of Sports Nightly. I'm Jessica Cooty, Greg Sharp off for the night. We got big hour coming up. We're going to hear from Heather Brink as Nebraska Women's Gymnastics gets set to open up their season. And if you want to be a part of the show, 402-413-2400. And the Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Again, 402-413-2400. Did want to bring up a couple of things that are happening in the chat right now so andy harris is one of the ogs of the chat when we launched this thing what almost like a year and a half ago well back in june of 2021 and he brought his kids to the iowa game he said he got to meet kent pavelka which was a bucket list for him that kent is a legend but also listen to this he said uh, before my son met sam greasel he had zero interest in watching and playing basketball now it's all he talks about is sammy playing trying to play basketball at school that's great that is so awesome sam greasel is an awesome uh, role model to look up to i'm working on a really cool story with him and a young fan 
man that that he's got a really cool bond with that is uh, really moving. So I can't wait to uh, release that. Then also, Children of the Corn asked, didn't Damon Benning play for the Lincoln Lightning Arena football team? He did indeed. Thanks to Mike Elliott back there. He uh, got me these stats. So Damon played for the Lightning back in 1999, the Lincoln Lightning, where he ran for a league record of 963 yards and 34 touchdowns on 217 carries. So there you have it. Um, Children of the Corn, he had a... Big year there for the Lightning in 1999. All right, time for our first interview here this hour. I got a chance to visit with Megan Straub. She's an All-American for Nebraska Bowling. Of course, one of those powerhouse programs here in Lincoln. They compete for national titles almost every single year. A lot of programs have tried to build and mimic what Nebraska Bowling has done that have uh, implemented bowling in their athletics departments. But now Megan is also works for the athletics department as a part of the sports information team. So when we need interviews or we need to get someone on one of our programs, we hit up the uh, SID group, the communications team up there. So now she's part of that. So a little uh, couple of different perspectives that she can bring. So this is Megan Straub, my interview with her as a part of our Title IX series. How much do you appreciate, too, I mean, because, again, going back to, to Title IX, and, and this is a program that's here because Title IX and providing opportunities and, and all that, that, that there, were, there was an opportunity for you to be a student athlete, to be a part of the program here. Yeah, we got really lucky. Um, I know my dad worked really closely with Bill Byrne, the past athletic director here, and, and he believed in having bowling here and thought that it was going to be something that didn't only help with Title IX, but it also is going to be something that's successful and could get national championships for the school. So last year, I was on TV for the first mm -hmm. time, Big Ten Network, and they said the ratings yeah. were awesome, mm -hmm. and the uh, Big Ten folks loved having it on, and they wanted to try to do it again. How cool was that for you to see as someone in the athletics department, someone that was an athlete here, to see your sport on that stage? I loved it, and I loved the response that we got, too. Um, so the play-by-play -play guy is Larry Putney, who actually bowled here, and a lot of people didn't know that. They were just surprised at how great the broadcast was, and he's a pro no matter what sport right. it is, but he actually had a very personal connection. And then my dad was able to do the, the color, and I know he really loved that. Um, kind of a funny story. I was working TV, so I was TOC, and they asked me, like, Time hey, out coordinator, by the way. Yes, time out coordinator. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and I'm wearing the headset, talking to the guys in the truck. I'm like, hey, could you just tell us what happens each shot? Well, they didn't know. They put me in a spot that I, I could not see the pin. So I did my best because if you can listen, a lot of times you can hear what pins were left. So I was trying. My dad's better at that than I was. But like, oh, I think they left one there. Like, well, they got the spare. So I probably didn't do the best job. But it was it was a really fun experience. You can hear when mm -hmm. people bowl how many pins are left. Yeah, usually you can. You can hear when you hit the pocket and strike. Usually you can hear if they went a little high. They left one pin. It's a talent. But if you're around a bowling center enough, you can. You can tell what's left. Wow, we need to make you an analyst. By <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so when people go, because last year when they they had fans out there, and and I was going to look at the schedule here of what's coming up, but. Um, they can come watch, right? And, and you guys as athletes love that, right? Yeah, we have a home tournament every year. Um, it's going to be at Hollywood Lanes. And it's really great to have fans out there because there's a lot of places that we go that don't have as many people as they have for our home tournament. So it's, it's great to see our own fans and a lot of support. And it's, it's great. So you, you talked about how you started off, you had to change your sport and you worked really hard to, to walk on. And by the end, you're an All-American. Mm. So. How rewarding was that by the end when you were one of the best in the country and, and named an All-American? It was rewarding. It, it just kind of happened, really. I didn't think about it too much. Like I said, I just I made sure every day I was learning something and getting better. And my thought process was how the team was doing and trying to win a national championship for the team. And while I got better trying to achieve that goal, the All-American came with it. That's what it's supposed to be, right? Yeah, like the, yeah. the individual awards come with the team, right? Yeah. What, what did it mean to you, too, and then now being a part of it in a working capacity that, again, there is so much support? Because, I mean, and I've said this so many times, people are probably sick of hearing it, but, like, it, it's just not like this everywhere. And, and especially across the board, the emphasis it's put on all of the women's sports and mm -hmm. the fans that show up. And so what has that meant to you in that perspective of seeing this kind of support that is given to the women's athletics programs here? Yeah, I've seen it every day that I'm working here. My dad had told me that 
the 20, 20 plus years that we have great support. And now that I'm on this side of it, I can see that as well. And we just are really blessed and it's a lot different compared to other bowling programs throughout. And there are some that are getting to this level and there's some more Division One, closer to Power Five schools that are also adding bowling now. But what we receive here is unmatched and it's just, it's really great. So when your career as an athlete's done, what made you decide to come work mm -hmm. here in the communications department? I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I student taught at a high school. I was teaching English. And I really liked that side of it. I liked the journalism, working with students with the newspaper. Um, but then I just had this feeling that I wanted to get back into athletics because once my dad had retired, my connection to it was different. Once I graduated, it wasn't the same. So I got into a master's program with athletic administration. And we were meeting different people in departments. And Jeff Grish in our department was on a Zoom call. and. He spoke to me a little bit through the Zoom call. I'm like, oh, this sounds like funny. It really fit with what I already was doing, teaching students in class and working a little bit journalism. Um, so I reached out to him and I met him in person. And I already knew a little bit about the department, just being an athlete here. But I really got to know everybody there and I felt like I would really fit in. Um, so I started my graduate assistant position. Then I got my degree and graduated. And then now I've continued working with them. And I tell them, as long as you want me, I'm here. So that's my plan for now. And I'm really liking what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I brag all the time about how great the uh, support is for women's sports, but the, the sports information department really here here is so good. You guys win the awards mm. every single mm. year, national awards. I mean, you guys are really second to none. You have wrestling and soccer, and literally any time I, I need anybody, um, I'm like, hey, can you get me somebody? And, yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, but how has that been, too, like working with the student athletes from that aspect? And I guess maybe tell a little bit about your job, because there might be somebody listening in that might be interested in sports information, too. Yeah, so... I've had to learn a lot, especially with stat keeping, soccer specifically. It's a pretty big program that you have to track everything that's happening during the game. So that was the biggest learning curve for me. Writing previews of a match or recaps of a game isn't too difficult because I already had wrote a lot of things and have had a lot of those things happen in my previous experiences. Um, but with wrestling, that was a whole new experience for me because I've seen it before but didn't follow the scorekeeping at all. Um, so that's been something that I've spent a lot of time on. And thankfully, this is my second year doing it. So the first year was a, a big learning curve, but now I'm feeling more confident with what I know about the sport. And for both of them, the athletes are great and the coaches are really awesome to work with. And I've enjoyed all aspects of it. You also help manage the inner voices, which are, uh, you know, on the website every year and or every, uh, well, what, it's about every week almost. Yeah, well, almost. we have a lot of people that are interested in sharing their story, so it's great. We have probably one every two weeks. That's awesome. Months. So, and then you also write and, and you also pass along stories. So if you have some stories of some athletes that maybe people aren't as familiar with that you think are just really cool, do, are there any that stick out in your mind? Any, any sport? Um, we've had a couple really awesome ones this year. I'm trying to think most recently we did the Tommy Armstrong story, which that was already kind of out there on social media, but um, we just got a little bit more information and more of Jalen's experience of it and, and her perspective. Um, we have one coming out soon about Darby Thomas. She has a pretty incredible journey in high school. Um, she was a great track star in Iowa, and one of her teammates ended up passing away um, her freshman year of college when Darby was still in high school and she was in a car accident I believe and then her dad had also passed away when she was in high school wow. so she uses those two things to inspire her and, and her track career um, but every story that we've done just been so inspiring and it's just really fun to get to know athletes in a different way and it's a story that you wouldn't probably see just by watching them on TV or seeing them out on the field. Because that's probably kind of being journalism and like liking to write kind of what you like about sports yes. too, right? Yes, that's a, definitely the journalism side, finding those stories. Um, it connects with, yes, what I like to do before as well. Well, um, I guess, and then what's it been like when you made that transition? I know you, you were learning a lot, but to get to be back a part of the athletics department team when you were a student athlete and all these people that were doing stuff for you and then mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you're working with them, what's yeah. that, what that transition was like? It's definitely a change, but I was telling somebody recently, it feels like I've been a part of Nebraska athletics my whole life yeah. because really in some way I have. So it doesn't really feel much different. I know a lot of the same people, a lot of them have been here. We have a very 
like an old group of people that like to hang around here a while because once you get here, I think you don't want to go anyplace else. Like it's just so great to be a part of all of this. Um, so really not much different, but it's just been fun learning all these different things and who I need to talk with for what I'm trying to get done. I know um, obviously your dad was a big inspiration, but in this Title IX series, I like to ask every woman that comes and sit in, sits in the seat about a woman who was a woman that inspired you in your journey, whether, you know, career or, or as an athlete, and do um, you have one of those? I haven't really talked about my mom so far in this, but she bowled here as well, and she bowled for my dad in the late 80s to early 90s. And she was a player of the year, an All-American, and she helped me a lot on my journey as well through, obviously through life, but through volleyball, through bowling, and anything that I'm doing. So she would be my top female athlete here um, and just an inspiration for me in my life. Did you have, other than your mom, did you have a favorite that was one of your, uh, your dad's athletes? You I mean, I can't say one, one specifically. <laughs> um, no, there's just, there's been a lot of awesome awesome ladies throughout the years and I can't pick just one yeah. um, we've had lots of really good teams how did you handle that pressure I mean you said you didn't want to embarrass them so you bowl but like I mean mm -hmm. and then when you start bowling I mean did was that ever in your mind or I'm sure they did a good job of not making you feel like you had to be them or or yeah you know what I'm saying yeah no I understand um, I would say my first couple of years there was a couple times where in my head I was questioning myself and questioning my abilities and should I really be playing out here and I never heard anything from any other teams to say oh she's just playing because she's the coach's daughter but that's still something that kind of comes up every once in a while especially if I wasn't doing very well and had stayed in a game when he could have potentially taken me out but kept me in those types of things but that didn't last for very long I mean like I said my dad coach Klumpa they made sure that that wasn't an issue very early on and they didn't want that to affect how I performed so when, it start, when I started feeling that way, it didn't last very long. That's awesome. Yeah. If there's an a athlete that's listening in that maybe they wanted to play volleyball in college and there's something that derailed that plan and mm -hmm. what you said, you had a plan planned out, but they still want to play something in college, what would, what would be your advice? I think there's a lot of like, obscure sports out there that offer scholarships, and a lot of colleges throughout have those. They offer that sport. So I think just do your research and kind of see what's out there because there's a lot of different avenues to become an athlete in college, and there's a lot of sports that there's not too many athletes that play them, and it's very specific, but if you're good at it, you can, you can find a way to get your schooling paid for and have some great benefits of being a student athlete. All right, Megan Stroud, appreciate your time. Yeah, thank uh, fascinating. you. I mean, I could keep asking you questions, but that's awesome. And uh, probably if anybody hits us up tonight and needs any bowling tips, I'll uh, <laughs> maybe let you call in. <laughs> Sounds good. Along. You let me know. Appreciate your time. <laughs> yes, thank you. Again, work very closely with Megan with uh, some sports and, and getting interviews, but I thought it was just so fascinating to hear more about bowling because that's a sport I didn't know a lot about before I got here, and certainly that's a uh, big program around here and uh, made possible because of the Title IX regulation. So um, uh, it was really cool to get to hear her perspective, and she uh, actually gave some tips too, so hopefully I will improve my bowling game the next time I go do that. But uh, again, this Title IX series is brought to you by Bank of the West. Women-owned businesses are vital to a thriving culture of entrepreneurship, innovation, and responsible contribution to the community and the planet. Bank of the West is proud to provide resources, training, and solutions to help you achieve your goals. Learn more at bankofthewest.com. Member FDIC. All right, we're going to continue our Ladies Hour coming up next. We're going to talk a little number. Nebraska women's gymnastics who open up their season tomorrow inside the Devaney Center. Lots of fun things happening with that. And so they want a big crowd out there to go support those women. Husker fans are the best in supporting women's sports. So we're going to hear from Heather Brink coming up. And our Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of these 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for at Woodhouse. All right, back with more from Sports Nightly coming up next. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time again for some Nebraska farm facts. For Nebraska soybean farmers, sustainability is a way of life. 97% of farms are family owned and 95% are participating in conservation programs and using sustainable practices. 
and they have significant sustainability goals by 2025. 10% more energy efficiency, 10% less land, and 25% less soil erosion. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. It's harvest special time, and you can save $3 per foot or $3,900 per quarter mile system now on a TNL pivot system. Pivots worked long hours this season battling dry weather to save top dollar corn and soybean crops. But did your pivots work like no other? If not, it's time to invest in a reliable, safe, low maintenance TNL irrigation system. Hydrostatic drives move these durable workhorses continuously across fields. So get an irrigation system that works as hard as you do. Contact TNL Irrigation, your local TNL dealer, or visit us online at TLIRR.com. TNL Irrigation Systems like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now kids can eat free. Bank of the West is offering the first checking account designed for climate action. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you shows you the estimated carbon impact of debit card purchases and there's no minimum balance required learn more at bankofthewest.com slash one percent additional conditions apply member fdic farmers mutual of nebraska is proud to support husker athletics having a confident teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most with the proven track record of dependable coverage unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. 
Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to Sports Sightly, I'm Jessica Cooney, and we have got Nebraska Gymnastics opening up on Saturday against Arkansas. And to talk about that is head coach Heather Brink. Well, you guys ready? Uh, we are ready. You know, it's like this long time coming kind of thing. So we've just finished preseason. Girls are really excited, obviously excited to show their new routines, upgrades, all that kind of stuff, and uh, kind of prove what Nebraska Gymnastics is about. Well, you have um, a lot of newcomers, but a lot of people returning, too, mm -hmm, that made a big mm -hmm. impact on this program, too. Let's start with Emma Spence. Yeah. I mean, it's, what a summer she had. Competed for yeah. uh, Team Canada in the world. They first time they medaled there, and she competed in every single meet in the all-around for you. What kind of expectations do you have for her going into her sophomore season? Yeah, I think, you know, now Emma kind of understands the NCAA format, right? And I think she's excited to showcase some of the upgrades she put in her routines throughout the summer piece of things, uh, obviously perfecting it from a collegiate standpoint. Um, but yeah, I think Emma's strength is her consistency, you know, and no matter what, I think we can rely on her to kind of get up, do what Emma's capable of doing and uh, deliver a hit routine almost every single time. And I think that's really what made the impact for Gymnastics Canada in reality. I think she, uh, her consistency is really what kind of bolstered them overall. What does that do for a gymnast, um, particular, that goes and competes at that level and then comes back and, yeah, and competes yeah. collegiately? Well, you want to talk about a pressure situation, right? Like representing your country right. on the world's largest stage. Uh, definitely and they've never been there before. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and then to to medal, you know, I mean, I just think. Uh, they were really the only country that hit all of their routines. Wow. You know, and I think that that's what made the biggest difference for them. But, you know, you bring back the ability to kind of compete under that type of pressure. Um, I think it kind of helps you in a composure setting, right? Like in gymnastics, we're, we're a team, but you're still competing individually. Um, so it gives her that opportunity to, you know, really grow and, and learn from that. But I think the biggest thing Emma learned over last year and even through this is, just by enjoying the moment and enjoying the gymnastics and, you know, really doing it for that love of the, the sport has allowed her to kind of grow um, and produce results. Um, and I think she's really kind of understands now that that has really helped her in that performance value for sure. So right. uh, I look forward to her kind of stepping up into a leader role, right? I mean, she's now no longer a freshman and, <laughs> and a sophomore. And while that's still young, she has all that other experience. Right. So um, I think for her, uh, it'll increase her confidence. Um, she's got a new floor routine she's really excited to showcase for everyone. So um, I think you'll see a little bit more of the playful side of her, which is, which is really fun. So it's, it's kind of cool to see that growth. Well, along with Emma, Claire Colombo also was a Big Ten gymnast yeah. to watch going into the season. A senior, also uh, an yeah. all-arounder. What, what kind of expectations do you have for her? Yeah, I mean, Clara's got some upgrades on, on the events. I mean, she pr predominantly does bars and beam. Um, she's upgraded her bar dismount and top-notch in the country, you know. Uh, I think that that will be a, a big piece for her. Um, and then balance beam, some changes in her routine. And I, she's just a beautiful athlete, you mm -hmm. know, just that the ability to really watch her perform on beam and and the artistry and that she just brings that love um, of who she is, you know, that Italian nature to, to what she's doing and that finesse. And so I think she'll, she'll be a big impact for us on those two events. Uh, she's a senior, right? So I think she automatically has that, you know, leadership role and how do you gather the team and get, you know, get that group going. And so I think they'll rely on her for that consistency and that, that leadership role as well. And Kinsey Davis, one of my personal favorite <laughs> athletes overall of yeah, any sport yeah. here at Nebraska. I've worked with her. She wants to potentially maybe do broadcasting, so I've met with her. And, and she, boy, you were talking about involved in several different things. Yeah. She's embodying the student athlete, yeah. but she has provided some big moments yes. for you as yes, well. Yes, yes. And I think you'll continue to see that from her. She's a perfectionist by nature. I know she's still kind of chasing after some of those uh, big goals of hers. Um, and, and she's stepping into that leadership role. You know, she's now in the junior um, class and, and automatically you get that, you know, upperclassman kind of leadership piece. So she's singing the national anthem, or at least that's the plan for the, uh, for the competition. So you want to talk about going from one role to the next. She's singing the national anthem and then has to go compete vault like four minutes later. So um, I think she'll um, be a lot of fun. I think she's kind of like the firecracker, right? She has a lot of uh, spunk to her. People really enjoy watching her from the stands. And she has that ability to kind of um, get the crowd involved with her too, right?
She sang the national anthem in multiple places. Now she is at a basketball game. She did it at the Title IX rally. She told me she gets that was way more nerve wracking than anything she's done gymnastics. Yeah, twice. yeah. I mean, we had the conversation beforehand, and I was like, okay, if you can tell me, you can turn around and perform, right? She's like, I think it'll be good because I'll be so much more worried about the national <laughs> anthem than the actual gymnastics. So uh, I know she's excited for that piece. Um, it's also some, you know, we support the value of becoming people too, right? right. And it's it's a talent. I wish I had. I couldn't Same. sing the national anthem, you know. So um, if she wants to do it and, uh, you know, we kind of give her that platform to be able to do it, I think that that's a pretty special place to do that um, and then be able to go showcase, you know, your talent in a different way too. Absolutely. Well, those are three athletes right there that have been a big part and had a, were a big part of your lineups yeah. and, and yeah. multiple lineups. What does that do for you going into, you know, planning a season when you have those type of caliber athletes that have been there and competed for you at that level? Yeah, I mean, I just am looking for the whole team to continue to build on consistency we've we they have worked so hard as a group um, and a physical component we have thrown you know challenge after challenge at these kids and they've you know continued to step up to to those levels and sometimes even surprise us which has been um, you know really really nice um, I think kind of going into the meet season now it's it's building from like where we are physically to a consistent nature of that you know um, what am I going to get when I'm on the competition floor, right? When the pressure's on, how am I going to handle that pressure? So I'm just really looking to this team to kind of rely on that preparation because they are physically prepared for that um, and just transition that piece into, you know, their performance and just really enjoy the moment, right? Like, mm -hmm. let's not be stressed about it. Let's, um, you know, do our job. We're, you know, looking to hit 24 for 24 routines and, um, you know, you can't control the score. Uh, you can control what we can control, and that's that's who we are and, and our individual performances. So um, just looking for them to kind of start off strong and then continue to build from there. Visiting with Nebraska Women's Gymnastics Head Coach Heather Brink. Well, tell us about some of the newcomers that yeah. we can expect to see some yeah. fun things from this season. Yeah, we've got a, a couple transfers, one from um, BYU, who, who I think will um, – really be in four different events, you know. I think she's um, really come on strong. She's kind of stepped up in some of that consistent, you know, leadership uh, aspect of things, and, and you'll see her. Uh, I feel like she's she's good on all four. Um, her floor routine is a lot of fun to watch. I think Beam is pretty consistent um, and will rely pretty heavily on her. Uh, we've got a brand new transfer, just came in like a week ago, really getting December adjusted. December 29th, right? Is yeah. It was officially right? announced. Yeah. yeah, so she's, uh, she's working to kind of bust into some lineups, and, you know, obviously we want to make sure we take care of her. Um, and then a freshman class, right? And uh, I think you'll see a lot of newcomers get an opportunity lineup changes maybe throughout the year people kind of trying to get um, you know get that depth in the different events will provide that opportunity for them to be able to do that I mean they they're you know I think the freshmen are all a little nervous like they're just not sure what to expect right and they're like oh my gosh I want to do so well right um, but I think once we get through the first meet they'll they'll kind of realize what it's all about and and uh, be focused but a lot a fun fun group of kids um, I think you'll see a lot of them kind of personality wise on the floor which will be a lot of fun so yeah looking forward to that piece for sure how do you go about building the lineups for each yeah. event and I'm sure it's like ever changing yeah, and, yeah. And so how do you approach it starting off the season yeah I mean uh, coming into the season we've had a couple different practice inner squad uh, sessions to kind of put the pressure on them um, and and you just kind of continue to do what we call these one arounds which is like a meet type situation one routine raise your hand show your routine um, who can deliver in those in those moments in that one turn because uh, we don't get a mulligan you know right. like it's just one time so uh, you continue to do that you continue to watch consistency throughout practices um, and then learn who you know like I have probably one of our most consistent beam people leading us off you know what I mean um, so you, you kind of try to learn each person and and where they're gonna handle that who's gonna handle if somebody makes a mistake in front of them um, who how do you build on the scores right it, it, it's a lot of conversations between coaches I mean ultimately you're just guessing right you're mm -hmm. guessing going into what the judges are gonna score it and what they're gonna do and so that's why I say you'll see some things change throughout the year uh, you'll see some different opportunities every Every meet is an opportunity or every week is an opportunity for these athletes to kind of bust into the lineup um, and and we've just really worked hard to build that depth so I really hope that we have an opportunity for for everyone to kind of be able to see that 
Um, and, and when the time counts, you know, and I hope they slam the door open and, you know, show what it's all about for sure. You mentioned the floor routines. Yeah. It's the fan favorite, the final <laughs> event. It always brings down the house. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about some of the lineups we can see and, yeah. and the routines on that. Yeah, I, they worked really hard. I think you'll see a big growth in a lot of our performance value of our routines. Uh, we've specifically throw the bones in there and every one of that. our routines. So I hope all the fans are watching for that. Uh, and then also at this first meet, be able to learn every routine we're yelling, go big red or go skurs or go huskers or whatever somewhere in the routines. Uh, and so we hope to kind of get the crowd involved in, in that piece of it. So I think you'll see some big tumbling. I think you'll see a lot of smiling faces and, and hopefully we can draw the crowd into that piece as well. There are very few well, sporting events. I mean, Gymnastics is very entertaining mm -hmm. in person. Mm -hmm. if, if people are listening and, and hasn't haven't ever been like that is a, a sport that I mean it is it's almost like sensory overload. The first time I went, there's so much going on and it's so much fun yeah. to watch. Yeah. And, um, how much do you guys enjoy when you have a huge crowd that you can? Oh perform my in front gosh! Of? Right, like I'll reminisce on videos, right, and you can hear the crowd in the background just chanting "Go Big Red" mm -hmm. or you know uh, "Husker Power" or whatever it is. Um, and I think that that really serves as like our seventh person in that lineup. It feeds the athletes adrenaline and um, gymnastics is not easy. That adrenaline and we rely on that sometimes to kind of help our performance. So I think when you really talk about the student athlete experience, a crowd makes a huge difference. Uh, I know we're making a big goal to try to get 5,000 people um, in our stands at, at every home meet, right? Not just this home meet, but every home meet. And this is our Pepsi Pack the House. Uh, tickets are a dollar, so I hope people turn out, um, be able to watch that come for, you know, the free giveaways and, and really, um, I think they'll make an impact. I, I, with a double dual meet like this, you get the one, one person goes at a time. So right. it does allow that opportunity to see both teams in a, in a full component piece of it. Uh, Arkansas is a really great team. I think they'll see great gymnastics from them. Um, some pretty high level athletes there. So I, I'm really excited. The athletes are super excited. Of course, you know, this is our home territory and we want to defend it. So um, we're going to battle on Saturday and we hope our, our fan and fans in our community show out to help us. Love that again. Saturday, coming up Saturday, January 7th, 3 o'clock. And you mentioned Arkansas. They're coming in the 15th ranked team yeah. in the country. So yeah. there's going to be some good gymnastics on yeah. display. Yeah, we got a lot to prove. And I think, um, you know, you'll get to see a lot of good gymnastics from them as well. I mean, they've got three Olympians as coaches. Um, and so the, they're, you know, looking to kind of prove themselves. So it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. I think the crowd will really enjoy it. You'll get to see some great things. Uh, and like I said, I hope they turn out so they can help you know, support the Huskers in the win. Yeah, multiple giveaways, posters. We have the uh, roller banners. Roller yeah. banners. So, hey, yeah. who doesn't love free giveaways? Right, too? right. I know that's my son's favorite, the little roller banners, right? So they can uh, help us chant 10 when they see a good routine, right? And and really, the the crowd can help influence the judges for sure. All right, Husker Nation, you heard it right there from Heather Brink. Come on out, support the Huskers as they open up the season. 3 o'clock against Arkansas inside the Devaney Center. Thank you so much yes, for your time and best of you. luck. Thank you. Thank you. Go Big Red. All right. We're back with more here on Sports Lightly. Right after this, buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Shop Woodhouse Buick GMC first for your next SUV and experience the difference. We offer a full lineup of SUVs so you can find the one that best suits you and your lifestyle. The GMC Terrain and Acadia offer the perfect blend of tech and safety on the road. Or discover the style, comfort, and cargo space of the Buick Enclave. Plus, we make it easy to shop, finance, and purchase in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. For the fifth straight year, the University of Nebraska system is a top 100 patent earning institution. NU system researchers were granted 43 patents in 2021, with UNL researchers named as inventors on 25 of these patents. Husker patents include three projects with partners at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and six patents for a surgical robot developed by faculty in the College of Engineering. Pickup truck, sports car, motorcycle, minivan. 
townhouse, two-story, farmhouse, fixer-upper. What you drive and where you live is different for everyone. So it's important to have insurance that fits your needs and is just right for you. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that. Which is why our agents help you design a comprehensive auto, home, and life insurance plan. Insurance that fits just right. See Shelter Agents Jeff Bond or Reed Duvall in Lincoln for a free insurance review. Husker fans, get your tickets now for Nebraska's next home game at Pinnacle Bank Arena. The Huskers take on Penn State next Wednesday with tip-off between the Big Red and Nittany Lions set for 7 p.m. The Huskers will celebrate Australia Night in honor of Izzy Bourne and Jazz Shelley. Get your tickets at huskers.com slash tickets or call the Nebraska Athletic Ticket Office at 1-800-8-BIG-RED. That's 1-800-8-BIG-RED. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota Hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer rest of CY2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. Beardmore Subaru celebrates Nebraska volleyball again this season. Five national championships, 47 All-Americans, and a home sellout streak dating back to 2001. The longest streak for any women's sport in NCAA history. Beardmore Subaru has been a proud supporter of Husker volleyball for more than 10 years. Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue has the new Subaru Outback Wilderness. Loaded with off-road ready upgrades and the new Solterra, Subaru's first ever all-electric and all-wheel drive vehicle. Go Big Red! Your story, it lives in River City, where you can enjoy a metropolitan vibe and a small town feel, where we set the standard for service and looking out for one another, where there's so much more than steak in our thriving food scene. Your story is the story of Omaha, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's helping you keep up with the Cornhuskers or creating the content you crave. And here in the Omaha World Herald is where it comes to life. Omaha World Herald, where your story lives. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more acres solutions for every fill. Well, we talked men's hoops in the first hour. I wanted to spend a little time talking women's hoops because they are also in action tomorrow. Again, one o'clock against Rutgers. We'll have the call for you right here on the Huskers radio network. And this is one that you should be able to take care of on the road. Rutgers 0-4 in, in Big Ten play, 6-10 and 10 overall. But currently five teams in the Big Ten ranked in the top 25. Uh, we have Michigan, Iowa, 
Ohio State, Indiana, um, and then who's the other one? But Maryland is the other one. Creighton's uh, number 25 right now, but I was taking a look at the uh, top 25 or the, I'm sorry, the bracketology for women's basketball right now. They uh, luckily, because they do it for men's, and so they, they started this, I think, a couple years ago. They, they kind of have continuing updating the bracket, and it changes a lot throughout the course of a season. But currently, right now, they have Nebraska as an eight seed. So that was what they were last year. And you want to, it's a tough seed to be in because it's a tough matchup there in the first round. But then if you advance, you have to play the number one seed. And right now, they have them in South Bend against Notre Dame, who's playing some good basketball, too. So uh, certainly would like to see Nebraska move up and, and potentially have a chance to host because I think Pinnacle Bank Arena would be absolutely electric in the postseason for women's basketball and show the nation kind of what how what it means and what it looks like to support really support women's basketball the women I told you they're on the road tomorrow but they're back home on Wednesday night seven o'clock against Penn State and it's a fun night because it's going to be the Australia night so Jazz Shelley Izzy Bourne going to honor them they're going to give away some posters with those two on it so you'll want to get there and get there early a limited number to give away so if you're fans of Jazz Shelley Izzy Bourne get there they're going to give away posters for Australia night seven o'clock again for, against Penn State so there's a quick breakdown of women's basketball and went a little long on those first two segments so we're going to work in another break here final segment coming up here on Sports Nightly first interstate bank built for you learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com member FDIC. Back to wrap up the show next. Nebraska women's basketball offers one of the best values in all of Husker sports with single game reserve tickets at Pinnacle Bank Arena for just $15. Adult general admission seating is just $10, while youth and senior general admission tickets are $5. Children six and under are just a buck. Plans now to bring your whole family to Husker women's basketball for Big Ten home games in January and February. Get your tickets and the full schedule at Huskers.com. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. Here's Greasehold, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Ken Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grease begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app, Go Big Red. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org. 
Check out the Husker Extra mobile app from the team at Lincoln Journal Star. It's the best place for everything Husker sports. Search the App Store for Husker Extra and download today. Your stories are all around you, and in the Lincoln Journal Star is where they come to life. Go to LincolnJournalStar.com slash stories. Subscribe today and read on any digital device. All right, final segment here of Sports Nightly. I'm Jessica Cootie, and Greg is the keeper of the picks. We have no idea what the final standings were. I can't remember what everybody picked. I think I had a big enough lead that nobody could catch me, but I'm not sure because I, I made some bad picks this last time around. So either way, we will go ahead, Andrew and I, since we're the only two here, since, um, oh, you're on, look at you, you're on camera. Our talented director of broadcast operations, Mike Elliott, has implemented a producer camera if you are now on our YouTube chat, you can kind of see a little bit of what we kind of do on a daily night, come in, come out. This is our full production board, and we kind of just, uh, next to me, we have a bunch of boards that has our commercials that run through it. We have a bunch of spot blocks that go through our rotations. So there's nothing that that man can't do and set up for this network or um, this, uh, this uh, network and this TV show that we, we I run. love it. I love it. And now, like, when you join me, you don't just leave me creepily on camera the whole time. There you go. No, so, I, yep, so I'm right here, and I said, this is, this is awesome. Yeah, so Children of the Corn in the chat said another great show. Thanks, Jessica and Tim. Andrew, Tim is gone. Tim is left. We talked about it last night. So Andrew is back there. So now you can see him. You can actually see him when he talks. Okay, so we're running out of time. We only have uh, about three minutes left. Let's do our picks then since it's just us two here tonight no tim no greg and we have no idea we can't update you on the standings we don't know what happened so we'll just do it since this is the last show that we'll have going into the national championship games so we have tcu georgia who you got so yesterday i talked and i said i wanted georgia but i think i'm gonna go with tcu okay who, who knows until i said until i text greg that is going to be the only time it is set in stone. I could say Georgia yesterday, TCU today. Who, who knows what's going to pick? But I also heard um, something that we said like week two or week three. I think we said that this championship pick for me would, I think, be worth 10 to 15 points. No, that's to false. To catch up to... That's false. You sure? You, I mean, look at you trying to, like, play the system, whatever, uh, at trying to... Pick one last night, one tonight, so you can say, hey, no, 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 look. If you went back to that day, I picked this team. Okay, I'm just checking. I, Whatever. I, I, um, I am not going to get cute in this one. I got cute in the Ohio State game and um, Ohio State-Georgia game. I, I'm going to roll with Georgia. I think they probably realized it was too close for comfort there against Ohio State. And I like TCU. I will cheer. I, I said this last week. I will gladly... Uh, give up the point. I still think I'm far enough ahead that even if I lose this one, I'm, I'm still the winner. But I will cheer for TCU, but I'm going to pick the safe bet here and go with Georgia. Can we talk about the great progression that the revenge tour did have? He stuck up to his name, at least. I didn't get dead last, I don't think. But for at least a good week six, I was, I was, pretty, I was pretty good. You led for like two yeah. weeks. No, no. You're lying. Uh-uh. And no, I, I think... You had a lead over Greg, but I think Greg might have passed you. But am I not second? No, I think Greg passed you, but we'll see. Again, we'll, we'll need to check that. He might be he might be doing something uh, under under the table, flipping a few. Uh, we might have to go back and check him. Have no idea. Well, anyways, uh, been a fun couple of days of shows. Appreciate your help, Mike's help, and again, we're we're flying without Tim now so we are uh, rolling through and we got a couple games tomorrow we'll be on the air for the huskers radio network broadcast uh, men at mayor or er, at minnesota kent and jake will be on the air at 10 o'clock and then we've got the women coming up at one o'clock uh, Grish and Coatney will be on the call of that one starting at 12.45. So we got a full day of Huskers Radio Network coverage of hoops coming up for you tomorrow. And then on Monday, championship game 6.30 on ESPN. We will have a men's basketball show with Ernie Ziegler at, from 6 to 7 o'clock. So tune in for that. And Greg will be back next week. So again, thanks to all that helped out and all the interviews, all the people for helping me out uh, fill the time on the show. And thank you guys so much for listening. Have a great weekend and go Big Red and all the sporting events. It's a busy weekend, so let's see a lot of Husker wins and a lot of Husker wins to talk about next week. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
It's harvest special time, and you can save $3 per foot or $3,900 per quarter mile system now on a TNL pivot system. Pivots worked long hours this season battling dry weather to save top dollar corn and soybean crops. But did your pivots work like no other? If not, it's time to invest in a reliable, safe, low maintenance TNL irrigation system. Hydrostatic drives move these durable workhorses continuously across fields. So get an irrigation system that works as hard as you do. Contact TNL Irrigation, your local TNL dealer, or visit us online at TLIRR.com. TNL Irrigation Systems like no other. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. 